Coach Carroll here again with uh, another uh, tutorial video over a statics problem. Now, I do not want you to be like this guy, Bo Wallace right there. Bo Wallace, you don't want to be like that guy. Okay, that's where if you're like Bo Wallace, you work hard throughout the season. Sometimes you don't come to class. You're kind of lazy. And you get to the end of the game. You get to the end of the semester and you fail the exam. You fumble. You just fumble the trophy away. You fumble the ball away. And you lose the game when you're about to pass. Now, I was happy he lost the game, but I won't be happy if you lose your game. Okay? So don't be like Bo Wallace, guys. Okay. Uh, this problem that we're going to look at in this video uh, is a problem over 2D moments is the topic. So moments in 2D. Okay, well, what do we know about a moment in 2D? You already know that a moment in 2D, the magnitude of it, what's the magnitude of it? You all know that is F times D, okay? All right, so we know this is what we're dealing with. Now, the problem says the force P is applied perpendicular to the portion BC of the bent bar. So here's the portion BC. Force P is perpendicular to that. Find the moment of P about point C, about B, and about A. So three parts to this. Let's start out with point C here. Okay, so I want to find the moment about C. Okay, now we're going to do it by F times D. Okay? Now a moment is a vector, so we'll have to give a sign whether clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay? Alright, so let's look at the force P. Here's the force P. Now I'm going to draw the line of action of the force P. And I do that because this distance D, what's unique about it? Well, the distance D we, that's the perpendicular distance, is what we like to call that. It's the distance perpendicular from the anywhere along the line, or sorry, it's the distance that's perpendicular to the line of action of the force to the point we're taking the moment about. So if I'm taking the moment about C, there's the line of action of force P. What is the distance between point C and that line? Well, it's zero, okay? In this case, D is zero, guys. So what's the moment of point P about point, or sorry, the moment of force P about point C? It's zero, okay? Because the line of action of force P goes through point C, okay? So if the line of action of a force goes through a point, point C, there's no moment produced about that point. All right. Now let's look at let's look at point B here. Okay. So again, we're looking at F times D. Okay. So I want the moment about point B is a vector. So F times D. Well, again, here's the line of action of the force. Now, where is the distance that is perpendicular to this line of action that goes to point B? So from B, oops, sorry about that, from B to C, that distance right there, notice that distance is perpendicular to the line of action, so that distance is the distance that we want to use here. I'll call that DB, okay? So, what is that distance? It's 1.6, okay? So the moment, I can write it as F times D, where F would be 30 newtons, and the perpendicular distance would be 1.6, okay? Now, this is a vector. I need to show, is it positive or negative then, okay? Well, in, in 2D, we can think of that as clockwise or counterclockwise. So force P, wants to 
turn about point B in the clockwise, clockwise direction. So clockwise is negative. So one way to write that is as the negative k hat direction. Okay, and that would be Newton meters there. Okay, or you could also write this answer as 30 times 1.6 and then just show clockwise to show the direction Newton meters. Okay. Now I like to actually show the direction using a K hat like this rather than showing clockwise or counterclockwise. The reason for that is because when we go to doing a moment 3D, well clockwise and counterclockwise doesn't make sense in 3D anymore. So we will express vectors, there we will express a moment vector in i, j, and k components. So let's get used to doing that already in 2D. Okay? So you could also think of this as the right hand rule. You could stick your hand in the direction of this R vector, let's say. Curl your fingers in the, in the direction of P. Now make sure you're using your right hand for this. So there curl your fingers in the direction of P and which way does your thumb point? It points into the page. Okay, that's negative. Alright, so there's that answer there. Okay. Now what about the moment about moment about point A? Okay, well again let's always draw the line of action of the force P so there's the line of action of the force P. Now where is the perpendicular distance from A to this line of action? It's about right here. It's that distance. Now it's that line right there that I just drew. I'll call that DA. That distance is perpendicular to the line of action. Okay, and it goes to A. Now do you want to find that distance? No, you don't. Uh, it's kind of difficult to do. Okay, so in this problem, since finding the perpendicular distance to the line of action of P is difficult, uh, let's make the problem simpler, simpler by, um, by using Verignon's theorem. Now, Verignon's theorem says, it just says, let's take force P and let's divide it into its X and Y components. So that would be PX, and this would be PY, okay? Now, one thing we need to do here, guys, how do I know this is the X direction and Y direction? Do I see a coordinate system? No, I don't yet. I need to define a coordinate system, okay? Vectors do not make sense unless you have a coordinate system because the direction is based on that. So always define the coordinate system. I should have done that earlier. Okay. So I'm going to divide force P into its X and Y components. And now I'll find the moment produced by the X component of P and add that to the moment produced by the Y component of P. So the moment produced by, we'll say the moment about A produced by force P can be thought of as the moment about A produced by the X component of P plus the moment about A produced by the Y component of P. Okay, so what's the moment about A produced by the X component of P? Well, where's the line of action of P? X. Line of action of PX is right there. So what is this distance here? That's the perpendicular distance to that. Okay. So I know, let's call this D1. Okay, so I'm going to say PX times D1. So what is PX? Well, I need an angle that the force P makes with either a y-axis or the x-axis here so I can divide P into component form. Well, if I see that P is perpendicular to this bar BC, 
so yeah, perpendicular there. And I see that BC has this angle. This angle here is 40 degrees. And this line is parallel to P. What does that mean? That means that, let's get a different color here, get red. It means that this angle here is what? That angle is 40 degrees. Okay. So we'll go ahead and write PX then is what? 30 times the cosine of 40. That's PX. Now, what is this distance D1 here? Well, it's this distance plus that one. Okay, so this distance is 1.5 meters. So 1.5 plus, now what is this distance here? Now, I'm going to come over to a new screen here so we can see it easier. I'm going to draw a, draw a triangle here. Let's draw this triangle. Okay, so now let's pull that out here. There's that triangle. What is this length here? That length there is 1.6. Okay, now what is uh, either this angle or this angle? Either one of those. Okay. Well, what do I know here? I know this is 40 degrees. Okay. So if this is 90 degrees, let's get this. It's 90 degrees between here and here. What is that angle? Well, that angle is 50 degrees. Okay. So now let's look at what is this angle right there? That angle is 90 degrees, so what does that make this angle? 40 degrees, right? Because 40 plus 50 is 90 degrees here. Okay, so now I have this triangle, looks like this. 1.6 is the link to the hypotenuse. This angle is 40 degrees. And I'm looking for what is this distance right here. Okay, and I can find that distance by doing 1.6 times the cosine of 40. Okay, so back over here on this screen, that's this distance that I want to add to 1.5 to make this total distance D1. Okay, so it was 1.6 times the cosine of 40. So that is, sorry, this is the moment about A produced by PX. Okay, so the moment about A produced by PX. Now, which direction is this? Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Think of it like that. Well, PX is wanting to produce clockwise, clockwise motion about point A and that's a negative number, so I need a negative k hat. And what are the units I'm dealing in? Newtons and meters. Don't forget units. Okay, so I've defined the moment about A produced by the x component of P. Now let's define the moment about A produced by the y component of P. So here's the y component of P. What's the y component? Well, the y component I get with the sine of 40. 30 times the sine of 40. Okay, so that's that right there is Py. Now I need the perpendicular distance to Py. Here's the line of action of Py. Where's the perpendicular distance? So that distance right there is perpendicular. So again, from A perpendicular to the line of action of PY. So let's call that D2. Okay, that's what I'm looking for there, D2. Well, let's come back to this triangle here. What's D2? D2 is this length right here. Okay, that over here in the picture is that length. So from this triangle, how do I find D2? D2 is the hypotenuse times the sine of 40. Okay because D2 is opposite to the 40 degree angle, so use sine. 
All right. So now we're finishing up here. 1.6 times the sine of 40 degrees. Okay, now I need direction. So this right there expresses the magnitude. Now I need to get the direction. Remember, a moment is a vector. Okay, so is it going clockwise or counterclockwise about point A? Well, if P is PY is pushing up like this, and here's point A. That's wanting to turn this bar this way, this way. Okay, that's clockwise. So clockwise again is a negative, so negative k hat newton meters. Okay, now I just need to add this number and this number here. So I've defined the moment about a produced by the x component of p and the moment about a produced by the y component of P. Finally add these two numbers up and I'll find the moment about A produced by P. And you come up with negative 82.5 K hat, you need the direction, K hat Newton meters. Okay. Now let's talk about this. Why the K hat? Well if positive x is to the right and positive y is going up, which direction is positive k? Positive k would be coming out of the screen, okay? Out of the, your computer screen that you're looking now. So if you do right hand rule, so try right hand rule, and take your hand, put in the direction going from a up to p, then curl your fingers in direction of P and look which way your thumb points. Your thumb better be pointing, where is it, right there, into, into the screen. That's the negative K direction. Okay, negative K direction. All right, that finishes this video, guys.